Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the White Marsh Township Board of Supervisors meeting of July 9th, 2020 to order. JC, would you like to lead us? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for live action video of the flag out there. Appreciate that. So we're going to go into some announcements here and just as a, a recap at our last board of supervisor meeting, we began the conversation pertaining to racial inequities, inequalities and injustices with specific attention to the police department and our board and our township staff and our chief of police, our police department all take this very seriously. At our last meeting, Chief Ward read a statement and I directed the staff to explore venues to facilitate this dialogue. Since that meeting, our board and staff and our chief have been actively working. Some of us have participated in Zoom meetings and attended rallies and had personal conversations with neighbors and residents. So it's been a, a busy active time. I wanna reiterate and stress that we are listening, we are working on better ways and that this is a fluid process. It's also important to highlight that our chief has been very supportive and open to all of these conversations and I personally am very thankful for that. I am pleased to report that we have four updates to share tonight with everybody. The first one is related to body cameras. The, the Board of Supervisors in conjunction with the White Marsh Police Department are committed to outfitting officers with body-worn cameras in 2021. The estimated cost of 76,000 will be included in the 2021 budget discussions in order to allocate the appropriate funds necessary for this equipment. The township is also investigating grant opportunities that will help with this expense. And I'm going to pause there, Chief. Do you have any comments related to that? I'll mute. I'll mute, Chief. Um, as we've discussed, uh, body cameras are uh, a developed and developing tool in police work. Uh, there is quite an expense to implement them, and uh, we're looking at a system that would uh, join right in with our dash cams that we already have through a company called WatchGuard. Uh, and as Chair Nestor stated, we are preparing to look at it for the 2021 year. However, we are constantly and currently looking for any grant opportunities that would come up before then, uh, which we would uh, look at. Uh, this year if they became available. Uh, there's been some talk that they will in light of recent happenings across the nation. Thank you. The second item that we are working on is that uh, police policies. The township will post to its website the following police department policies. And I just wanna highlight that these are current policies. The use of force, bias-based policing, compliant review policy, internal affairs, code of conduct and disciplinary procedures and mental illness. I, I, the policies are um, police department accreditation requirements and this is really important to promote transparency and accountability. So I really commend uh, the, the chief for um, his willingness to share these policies to make the conversation continue. Chief, do you have any further comments about when these will get uploaded to the website? They are uploaded, uploaded currently. We made sure that that occurred uh, earlier today so that when the announcement came out, people can come go into the police section and they will find 
these policies, and these are our current policies as they are written today. As I've mm -hmm. stated in the past, these policies are living and breathing entities that are subject to change as more information and the best practices in police work may change. And then we will update in, in accordance with our accreditation standards and uh, research and development in the police industry. Excellent, thank you. The third item is at the last meeting, I tasked our township manager, Rick Miller, to look into the Human Relation Commission, uh, which is a current board or current commission with the township as a possible mechanism to continue the conversation with the police. And just to highlight, uh, the Human Relations Commission is an on-call board and meets if any complaint is issued, which prohibits discrimination in housing, commercial property, employment, and public accommodations on the basis of actual or perceived race, color, religious creed, ancestry, sex, national origin, handicap, or disability, use of guide or support animals because of the blindness, deafness, or physical handicap of the user, or because the user is a handler or trainer of a support or guide animal, or because of the individual's sexual orientation, gender, identity, or gender expression. So that board is um, part of the township, and to date, no complaint has been reported to the commission. So upon review of this, we did feel that it was better to go with reestablishing a board liaison to the police. And we have selected Supervisor Michael Drosner to fulfill this role. The board has this position, has had this position in the past and had met with the chief periodically. Um, the board liaison will act as a representative for the community should a member of our community feel uncomfortable discussing a police matter directly with the police. So this is a, another venue or another way to, to go. And I have asked Supervisor Drosner at his first meeting with the chief to discuss the frequency of their meetings, uh, the pertinent items that they will review and discuss and how they'll disseminate that information to the public. Um, again, this is a fluid, fluid uh, evolving um, conversation. And Michael, do you have any comments? Chief, do you have any comments? Yeah, I would do uh, yeah. I appreciate the, um, the board's confidence. I'm getting some feedback. You guys hearing the feedback too? Is that okay? A little bit. Uh, I appreciate now. the, all right. I appreciate the board's, um, you know, confidence in asking me to, to step in as a liaison. I look forward to working with the chief you know, for those in the public that, that don't know, um, you know, my, my day job is as a criminal defense lawyer. I've been working in the criminal justice system my, my entire career for about 20 years now. Um, I don't handle cases in White Marsh anymore because of my role on the Board of Supervisors. So I think I bring, you know, a, you know an experience in the system and understanding how it works. Um, and, you know, I've got all the confidence in the White Marsh Township Police that, that they do a, you know, a good and thorough and professional job on a daily basis. But I also understand that circumstances can arise that make people feel uncomfortable and make them feel like they've been treated differently or, or in a way that's uh, inappropriate and, and illegal. So, you know, I want to be able to be available to the public if they want to voice those concerns. I want to be able to work with the chief and, and his lieutenants to make sure that everything's running smoothly at the police department and certainly continue the culture that, that he's built there, you know, at, at the White Marsh PD. Thanks, Mike. Chief? Uh this is a position that we had before years ago, before I was the chief. I look forward to working directly with Michael on these matters. Uh, one thing we did discuss prior is, and we've posted our complaint review policy. Uh, we do accept complaints however they arrive to us. Uh, and uh, whether they come directly into the police department or arrive to us in an anonymous factor, we will investigate all complaints to the best of our ability. And uh, this will be just another avenue as uh, Supervisor Drosner explained that if someone's uncomfortable and wants to raise an issue, uh, they can go directly to him and then, you know, he will work it forward to myself or my lieutenants, depending what the situation would be. And it's just a, another avenue for our residents and visitors to uh, 
address any complaints they might have. Thank you both. Greatly appreciate the time already that you've put into that. The fourth item I'd like to highlight is training. The board recommends the police department increase the frequency of bias-based policing and de-escalation training from the state mandated every three years to every two years. Um, the township insurance provider, Delaware Valley Trust, provides training through the Anti-Defamation League, and the township is working with the trust to schedule training uh, this fall. Chief, do you want to highlight when the last training was and kind of like the future plans? Um, we're actually not due for either training. De-escalation was last year, and bias-based policing was at the end of 2018. But in light of current situations and whatnot with this new uh, request from the board, uh, we've already started the de-escalation uh, refresher with all of our officers. And we are working with Delaware Valley Trust and the Anti-Defamation League to set up a training, uh, not just for the police department, for all White Marsh Township employees for early this fall. And the reason we're doing that is one, they are busy dealing with a lot of things in COVID. And also in the fall, we won't have as many employees away from work for vacation and whatnot. We don't wanna miss a large group of our uh, staff and have to try to play catch up. So in early fall, we hope to have that in place uh, for the uh, bias-based policing training and, and just bias-based training in general. Excellent. Thank you. So that, that's the summary, the four items that we will be working on. And I, again, thank everybody for their time and dedication to the importance of this, this matter. Um, you know, it's fluid. We're going to continue to take input from people and, you know, make things better. We just want to make everybody feel comfortable living here. Uh, I have another announcement. Fran, hold on before I turn it over to you. Um, I want to share that our township manager, Rick Meller, has been appointed as president of the APMM, which is the Association of Pennsylvania Municipal Management. Uh, I, I think it's important to highlight when one of our family is taking extra time to, you know, improve and you know, follow best practices. So, you know, Rick, I, if you want to share, I know your strategic plan that you shared with me, but it would be great for you to share it yourself, if you don't mind. Well, thank you, Chair Vista. I appreciate you uh, recognizing. And uh, yes, I, I was appointed by my peers across the state of Pennsylvania as the president of the Association of Pennsylvania Municipal Managers for the next 12 months. And uh, each time there is a, a new president, they usually have uh, their goals and mission. And the APMM is completing their strategic plan. And it's, it's my goal to uh, oversee the start of the implementation to that plan. And really the focus is on member engagement and more specifically uh, diversity, uh, equality, inclusion in the profession of municipal management across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So it's something that uh, we talk about as managers uh, with regards to my colleagues um, across the state. And uh, this strategic plan was an important piece in order for us to further that in the profession of municipal management. So I'm very excited that, uh, that I have this opportunity, that this plan uh, is being completed and I can uh, get the ball rolling uh, to something that I think is uh, much needed and um, something that is very exciting in the profession of municipal management in the state of Pennsylvania. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Fran? All right, thanks, Laura. So tonight's announcements regarding ongoing trash recycling and yard waste, yard waste collection issues, the township understands the frustration of residents regarding the performance of JP Mascaro and Sons. We are equally frustrated with the service issues and are disappointed by Mascaro's response. We have made our concerns known to the management at Mascaro 
as we have worked to get the service that the contract provides for and that residents deserve. On June 26th, our solicitor wrote to Mascaro about the unacceptable service. In that letter, the township has identified a lack of consistent supervision and insufficient resources as areas of serious concern. We received a response from Mascaro on July 6th. Both letters can be found on our website. We are also aware that Pat Mascaro yesterday posted a message to communities served by the company. In that, he said it would take 30 to 45 days to implement changes to restore the necessary consistency to collection operations. Mr. Mascaro apologized for the inconvenience and asked for patience. This afternoon, the township received a similar letter from Mr. Mascaro that reiterated a need for 30 to 45 days to address service issues. The township is willing to give the company that time to resolve its lack of performance. In the meantime, the township will continue its monitoring of service and stay in regular contact with Mascaro. Road updates. Cedar Grove Road Closure. Aqua PA has informed the township that beginning this Monday, July 13th at 9 a.m., Cedar Grove Road will be closed between Joshua Road and Julia Drive between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Emergency vehicles will be granted access and Aqua PA will alert the County Communications Center if a complete shutdown becomes necessary. Aqua PA expects the road to be fully open by September 2020. The Colonial School District has advised the township that Aqua will be closing Colonial Drive from Germantown Pike to the Colonial Elementary parking lot beginning July 7, 2020 until work is completed. The closure will be in effect 24-7. Work is ex expected to take three weeks. Joshua Road remains closed at Stenton Avenue, heading north along the Cricket Club. The road is expected to be open sometime later this month. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. So I'm seeing a lot of comments in the chat coming in related to you know, the police and the announcements that we had. And because tonight we don't have anybody kind of sitting waiting for approval of their particular item, um, would the board consider having public comment related to the police at this moment? I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay, so I, is that everybody? Yeah, sorry. Okay. okay, so I'd like to open public comment period related to uh, conversations related to the announcement about the review of the police department updates only. We will still have public comment at the end of the meeting. So if people still need time to digest everything, that's okay. You can still have a comment related to this later. But, you know, we did just go through a whole bit about this now. I think it is appropriate to pause and let everybody comment about it now. But <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, Eli was the first to uh, submit a chat question. Uh, Eli, would you like to ask? Sure. Um, one of the things that um, I haven't really been hearing about much about is data. And um, I would like to see um, data from the police department made uh, publicly available on a regular basis. So for example, uh, every month um, there should be or could be uh, a report of how many arrests were made in White Marsh Township um, and specifically what was the uh, race, gender, um, ethnicity of the individuals involved in those arrests. And that should also apply to um, uh, traffic stops uh, or any other uh, indications. Um, it, it doesn't have to share criminal information that might be affecting uh, 
uh, a case in court or something like that. It would just reveal the data. There's just the raw data. Um, and I think that would provide uh, a certain level of accountability and transparency to the public. Okay, thank you, Eli. Uh, Luann Merkel, you have a comment about the MM strategic plan? Yeah, I, I'm interested to know if it's possible for Rick to share the strategic plan with the public. The strategic plan is not complete yet. Uh, when it is complete, it'll be posted to the association's website. Uh, they are still compiling the final pieces of it, and then it'll be on their website for uh, any folks to take a look at that. Would you would you put that out in the weekly email that we got so we know to look for it? Can do. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ivy Bryan is asking about community liaison and the school district. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm really glad to see that this is going to be a fluid and ongoing process as everyone learns um, what needs to be done. Uh, one of the things that I was wondering, um, because of to build community, and I remember my daughter went to preschool with I, she went, Chief Bear was, was the chief. Our daughters went to preschool. We knew all the police officers. There was a real sense of community. So I'm wondering in today's environment, if you would look at also having liaisons from the community and maybe even, you know, some kids from the high school as well um, in an effort to really get to know your community on both sides. Thank you, Ivy. I'm not, I'm not, Ivy, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand you. A liaison between the board, the board of supervisors and the community? No, no, no. To have somebody in the, a community, some community representatives from the community with the police department, from the high school with the police department, and build relationships that way. Well, I'll, I'll let Chief Ward talk about the, 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 the police departments in the high school on a regular basis. I think they've got a pretty strong, ongoing relationship. So I'll let Chief talk about that. Okay, and we also have the Colonial Area Anti-Racism and Social Equity Alliance, um, which would be also, you know, great to maybe have some people from who belong to that, be, if that's something that would be of interest to be a liaison. I mean, anything to build community instead of keeping us separated it would be a great goal, in my opinion. As for the school, uh, we already have the Plymouth White Marsh coalition where our officers are present in the high school uh, during activity periods and teaching in various classes. Uh, we have a, a pretty strong interaction with the high school and access by the students to, to our police officers and the police department. Uh, the community uh, part that would be uh, supervisor's decision. However, I would like to remind everyone, uh, not uh, actually the best, but our Citizens Police Academy applications are available for the fall, which gives uh, interested community members uh, access to the police department for 10 different class sessions here inside the police department. Uh, where we go over all aspects of the police department and the functions that we do. Uh, so anyone who's interested in learning firsthand about the police department, uh, the Citizens Police Academy is uh, one of the tools that you can use to do so. All right, thank you. Sedelzo, I think you have a comment. Yes, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, I want to thank Chief Ward and the supervisors for their commitment, your commitment to uh, purchasing the body-worn cameras. Um, I'm eager to see that happen, and I'm glad to hear that you will be looking for funding opportunities even before the next budget year. Uh, I'm also quite pleased that the key policies are posted on the website. Thank you very much. 
I have another suggestion, something else I'd like you to do, if you would. And that is to take a look at the mission statement for the police department, which closes with this statement, to serve those citizens without prejudice and to defend our community under any circumstance. That is a very militaristic close to a mission statement for a suburban police department. And I would urge you to take a close look at that statement and determine whether it is appropriate at this time. Perhaps it should be adjusted. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments at this moment? I do see one one question in there, and I believe I know it uh, in reference to uh, storage of the footage. Um, we would not use the company's storage for the footage of the body worn camera uh, material. That would get integrated with our in car camera, which is why we would use the same company so that each event would have not only the body worn camera footage, but also the dash cam footage all integrated in one package. And that storage is handled here in our building, in our, in our IT equipment. Um, taking storage off site and through the company actually would increase the price greatly. And I brought that up in, because in reading about adding body cams to the police forces, that that has become a huge issue. Um, being able over time to store and access it in a safe and um, relevant time period. I just think it's an area to be considered, that's all. Again, all of these things are, are fluid uh, and based on best practices and uh, current law and practices, which is what we always follow as an accredited agency. Um, and again, pricing does come in because storage can be your most expensive component, which I know you have to do, but right now right. That's, where, that's where we're at uh, with in-house storage with our current setup, but we will always be watching that as we do. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I missed your, you were the first comment, Amy. Sorry about that. No sorries. <laughs> okay. Thank you everybody for taking time to dialogue about this. It's certainly going to continue. We're gonna move on, uh, no public hearings at this time. So we're moving on to the minutes. Has the board had a chance to review the minutes? I would actually like to make uh, two amendments to the minutes and I, I'm not sure exactly how to do this. Uh, Sean, do I read what I am suggesting yeah, you can, change? You know, you just, all, all you do is read the two things you want to amend, and then someone make a motion to um, uh, approve the minutes as amended. Okay. So the two amendments, uh, the first regarding the public discussion of the Certificate of Appropriateness at 6 Marple Lane, the minutes state that Sidel Zov asked if the shed is legally and currently on the property. Please amend the minutes to state that Sidel Zov asked if the location of the historic one-room schoolhouse provides a role for the homeowners association to enforce the proper maintenance. The second is regarding the public discussion of the WalkWorks grant resolution. The minutes state that Sidel Zove commented Mr. Manuel stated that the developer at 901 Washington Street does not have the authority to make decisions about what happens on the Washington Street as they are township decisions. Please amend the minutes to the Board of Supervisors will make will be making the decisions regarding the de design of Washington Street. I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. 
Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to ordinances. Do I have a motion to authorize the ordinance amendment to chapter 103, streets and sidewalks to implement a five-year prohibition against new road cuts on any new any roads recently constructed, reconstructed, or paved in White Marsh Township? So moved. So moved. Second. Let's see, I see Krista, I see Jim. We can turn this one to uh, Jim. Thank you. Um, so basically this is to make official and codify a longstanding township policy uh, to enact a moratorium, a five-year moratorium on all new pavement cuts within roads that have been paved recently. Um, pavement cuts alter uh, the pavement surface and degrade uh, the surface. So uh, we basically just want to protect the township's investment moving forward. Um, there are some uh, <clears throat> different instances where you may need to make the pavement cut um, in an emergency situation or for a resident to connect a utility. So there are provisions in the ordinance for that. Um, Sean's office has drafted the ordinance and we recommend that you approve it. Thanks, Jim. Do we have any board comment? Do we have any public comment? Can I make a comment? Yes. It's actually a question. I don't know. I don't really understand it. what other purpose besides a utility. Uh, which would have, um, I, I imagine, uh, easements to cut into the road. What, what other reason would there be for um, cutting into the pavement? Um, so the utility connection that I referenced would be one of your residents wanting to make a lateral connection to say connect to gas. The moratorium would be for uh, utilities such as Aqua or Pico who wants to replace a line along a street. Um, we're in constant contact with those utilities, so this would uh, prohibit a long trench within the road from happening within five years of us paving the road. But that wouldn't prohibit emergency work, correct? A water it, main break, a sewer break, or something like that? It would not. Do we have any other comments? Okay, Mr. Miller, will you please call the roll? Unmute, Rick. Oh. Mr. McCusker? Yes. Ms. Toll? Yes. Mr. Manuel? Yes. Mr. Drowsner? Yes. Chair Nestor? Yes. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go down to motions. Do I have a motion to authorize the White Marsh Township Energy Transition Plan in accordance with the Ready for 100 resolution? So moved. Second. This is very exciting. Sean, would you like to lead this, please? Uh, yes, and I'd like to uh, start off by thanking um, uh, Luann, who's here from our EAB, uh, as well as all of the uh, WRET team uh, volunteers who, um, you know, really spent a lot of time, um, you know, with this document to, to make it what it is. Um, I'd also like to just make a couple of quick corrections based upon the um, Environmental Advisory Board's most recent meeting, which um, clarified some of the language in these goals. Uh, 
specifically goal one, bullet two, uh, will add the language and methodically proceeding with identified actions and conduct a period, uh, periodic review of implementations. And goal three, bullet two, uh, excuse me, uh, was also rephrased uh, to use funds from energy savings for RF100 activities. So th that document um, will be uploaded to reflect that language, um, and that language um, is uh, being announced tonight uh, so that as you consider this motion, um, you're aware that there are some language changes in those goals. Um, aside from that, um, does anybody have any questions about the goals? I know it was discussed at the EAB. I'm not sure how many uh, folks in the audience were um, in attendance that evening. Um, but uh, I, I think that um, our EAB agrees that this is a, a, a really great start to a long-term plan, a mid-term plan, and a short-term plan to reduce the township's um, reliance on um, fossil fuels and overall just improve our carbon footprint. Sure, uh, I'm sorry. Can you just go over, maybe it would be helpful to the public to just go over those uh, areas that are the focus per your memo. I think that'll be uh, good for Absolutely. the public to hear that, please. And bear with me as I bring that up right now. Uh, and this is somewhat summarized from the uh, memo that is included in tonight's agenda packet. Uh, but at their rescheduled May 2020 meeting, the EAB voted unanim unanimously to recommend an energy transition plan uh, to the Board of Supervisors. The ETP, the energy transition plan that is, will serve as a found, uh, foundation for the township to achieve the goals set forth in the Ready for 100 ordinance. The ETP's goals span seven areas, energy efficiency, uh, ordinance and guidelines, funding, renewable energy supplies, transportation to include all fossil fuel burning equipment, community engagement, and tracking progress. These goals are broken down into more specific projects and strategies in the energy transition plan, which is attached as, a, um, as an Excel spreadsheet. The first benchmark of this ETP is the energy audit, a survey of township owned buildings to determine our own carbon footprint. Our en energy audit was recently scheduled and will take place this upcoming Monday, July 13th. Uh, upon completion, the energy audit will provide the township with a snapshot of our current energy use and suggestions for ways that we can reduce energy consumption and costs. Those suggestions will be shared with the EAB for discussion at a regular EAB meeting so they can advise the Board of Supervisors on prioritization of those suggestions. And once again, I would like to thank the EAB and the WRET uh, volunteers who contributed to the creation of this plan. And I look forward to reporting back with our findings. Sean, can I follow did, did you change the language um, in the funding section? I, I have not yet. So that was one of the um, items, specifically goal three. Um, that I just updated prior to uh, this meeting. The, the agenda information was posted Friday, and um, we actually just had some conversations this afternoon to clarify the language that was approved by the EAB. Uh, and and so what's the language that, that's coming, in essence, from them regarding um, regarding the the energy savings fund? So the the material change was the motion to use. In goal three, use funds from energy savings for RF100 initiatives. Correct. And I, I think the EAB sees this as reinvesting energy savings into future energy savings projects. Great. Thank you. So do we need, is it okay to vote on this? as it is do we how do we go about with the edits that are there i think after we take public comment we could vote on the on it with with the edits as offered by sean any other board comments at the moment i, I would just you know briefly i mean sean said it i mean the the, the wret team did great work deb shiro 
you know, Luann Merkel and, and, you know, they've got a whole team of people that have done really heavy lifting on a really difficult, complicated um, topic. So we really appreciate their work. And, you know, we look forward to, you know, seeing this uh, take action over the next few months and few years. Thanks, Michael. So do we have uh, public comment now? Go ahead, Luann. Um, let's see here. Am I muted? No, no. You're, we can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah, well, it has to begin with thanks. Um, so I want to I want to thank uh, Sean for all his hard work and uh, Supervisor Drosner and you, of course, Laura. Um, I and I, I have a little list of things, and so I'll just read it. I want to thank the board for unanimously passing the Ready for 100 resolution last March. Um, 14th, 2019, and we agreed at that point to get a plan within a year. And so I wanna celebrate the fact that we were able to do that with COVID-19. Um, and so we reached our goal and that really is something to be proud of. Um, I wanna thank you again, Supervisor Nestor, for coming to our Montco Ready for 100 Clean Energy Conference, June 19th, <laughs> or June 29th of last year. There was a huge deal because all the communities around here, there's now 15 of us who have trained, you know, have made the resolution um, are working hard together. And so we're a community of uh, municipalities working to make this huge transition. So thank you for participating in that. I wanna thank um, Supervisor McCusker, Fran, for coming to our, um, all of our events, I mean, the the planning, the Wright Marsh Renewable Energy Transition Planning Team meetings, he was there and he helped me to build the team and I'm really grateful to him for that. I'm grateful for the $10,000 for the next three years that the board uh, put into this plan. And um, I'm grateful for all the support that we've had. Um, it hasn't been easy, but um, we've gotten to this point and I'm grateful. I also obviously really need to thank uh, Deb Schrero, our EAB chair, because as an engineer, an environmental engineer, she guided us through the what now constitutes our spreadsheet, um, our energy action spreadsheet. She understood at some point in a way that I couldn't see it. Um, that we didn't have the time to make our goal. I'll be quick here. Um, we weren't going to make our goal of a year and getting a plan unless we really cut to the quick. And so she got us focused on seven goals. And that was the good point was that we now have the essence of a plan. And that leads me to what did we leave out? What we left out was the mission, the vision. And as Deb so... <laughs> uh, engineer like says, we left out the verbiage and the data. And I'd like to encourage the board to do another implement, implementation piece. Sean talked about the energy audit, which is gonna happen in a heartbeat. The other piece is we have an opportunity to continue working with our um, Montgomery County, Chester County, Delaware County, ready for a hundred group, on a seminar that would refine our energy transition plan and for a mere $50. So um, I would like to encourage um, the board to give a thumbs up because I don't know how it works with funding. We say we have the $10,000. If I had my way, I'd say, you know, through the EAB, let's participate in this um, seminar for energy transition um, development. Um, to further enrich our plan. And so, so that's, my, that's my big ask. Huge gratitudes and now comes the hard work, the heavy lift of actually implementing it. So as we do the energy audit, we get the data and um, then it's, it could be an educational moment in the seminar to learn how to move forward with this. So I, I have sent an email out about the seminar. So. That's my question. Do we have any other comments?
I just want to say that Luan, he did a marvelous job there. It was tough, and um, he did a great job bringing it to, to this point. And uh, we're ready to take it to the next level, that's for sure. But thanks for all your hard work. Thank you, Fran. Great. Well, I thank you too, Luann, and I thank Deb and the whole EAB team. And it's been a lot of a lot of time. And as I said, you know, over a year ago, this is not a fluff thing. This, you know, was going to require a lot of work and be difficult. And, you know, we have to power through and on and up. So thanks a lot for for your time. Uh, so, that. so how do I how do I move forward with like if I have this recommendation that we participate in this Ready for a Hundred seminar and spend money? How does that process work? How like the deadline is like in a blink of an eye, and I don't know how to. I mean, am I? This is where I feel like I'm an you know the proverbial um, bug. I've asked repeatedly through emails and I haven't gotten responses. And so I'm not sure what you so, want me to do. If I could just weigh in quickly, there were actually two uh, um, pre-meetings for this training that um, one was just this afternoon and I attended both. They were great, um, great information shared in them. Um, I had planned to attend both of those before I followed up with you on that email. So you can expect an email uh, tomorrow following up on that. Thank you, Sean. I'm glad you enjoyed them. Okay, do we have any other comments? I think we're ready. All right, I think this is, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. There you go. Virtual hugs. Okay, do I have a motion to authorize the permit fee waiver request from the Colonial School District in the amount of $9,124 for the high school and elementary school asphalt paving and light lighting project? So moved. Second. Rick or Jim? I will certainly take this one. This is um, in line with our fee waiver code. Uh, the, the school district, as was mentioned in the motion, they are, as it was also mentioned in, uh, in the announcements, they're doing a lot of work um, outside of their facilities right now at the high school and elementary school. This is their asphalt and lighting project. Uh, that they have going on and currently um, undertaking at this time. The total amount for permits is $9,124. That includes the cost for building and electrical permits. Uh, we have granted these fee waivers in the past to the Colonial School District based on our fee waiver code. Thank you. Are there, is there any board comment on this? Any public comment? Great. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to authorize the change order request from James D. Morrissey for the contract at Stenton Flower, Flower Town Cricket in the amount of $24,245.88? So moved. Second. Jim, would you like to highlight? Uh, yeah, no problem. So this change order is related to modifications that uh, PADEP uh, made um, us make to the plans uh, for the outfall structure. So in the time since the plans were put out to bid, DEP was reviewing the um, permit application and they made uh, we had to make some modifications, so this change order is related to that. 
Uh, we've evaluated the proposal from JDM and recommend that the board increase the contract by that amount, $24,245.88. Thank you. Do you have any board comment? Jim, is this all additional new work or is it modification of some uh, prior planned work as well? It's um, completely a modification of prior planned work. Okay. So the 24, 245 represents all the ads and deducts as a result of those changes. That's correct. Thank you. Any other board comment? Very good. Any public comment? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve expendi ugh, expenditures totaling $1,077,321.73? So moved. Payroll totaling $621,412.32 for June 2020. So moved. So I'll take the second then. Any board comment? Rick, I kind of bypassed you. Any comment? No comment. Very good. Any public comment? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. There were two items that were reviewed by HARB yesterday and that's what these are pertaining to. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness for the installation of a fence at 3033 Spring Mill Road? So moved. Second. Great. Is Charlie here? Uh, no, I will take this for him. He is, okay. Uh, he's not here today. So this was reviewed, as you mentioned, uh, Chair Nestor, at the HARB meeting uh, yesterday morning at 30. 33 Spring Mill Road. They are looking to put a four foot high fence in the front of their property, the front 18 feet. The remaining um, fence will go around their property, which will be six feet high. The, um, it is topped with white cedar, solid board privacy fence that they are requesting. This was reviewed by HARB and it was unanimously recommended for a certificate of appropriateness for the fence and the style of fence. Okay, great. Any board comment? Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, this is Chanel Zoom. I'd, I'd like to comment, please. Go ahead. Um, in the past, whenever a certificate of appropriateness has come up for um, um, houses um, in the historic district, the Board of Supervisors has always, I believe, benefited from some kind of uh, sketch uh, site plan uh, showing where the fence would be installed. Is that not available? And is, it, is that the case because Charlie is not participating this evening? Nope, it's certainly available if the board would like to see it. Sure, Rick, if you can pull that up as a shared screen. Here's the property. Here's your street view. That's basically the sketch of what the house looks like there. And 
So will the fence be on the street side of the hedge the, or behind the hedge, on the house side of the hedge? Or is it, is it replacing the hedge? I don't believe it's... Uh, let's see here. Hedges will heavily obscure any views from the fence. So it sounds like it's behind. Mm -hmm. So from the street, one will see very little of that. You kind of see it right here. See, there you go. Okay. So one won't see that fence. It'll be four feet high on the frontage and then six feet high running around the property. Thank you. You're welcome. I, ha I have a more general uh, comment regarding to um, these agenda amendments. Um, there seem to come up almost every single time at, at, at these meetings. And while this data that Rick is now showing is at the very end of the supporting data sent to the public, there's nothing written on the agenda itself. And I'm wondering whether there could be something that says proposed amendment to the agenda. So at least if the public is looking, as I often do, at only that first page uh, that shows the agenda, that you would know that there are two items that are pr probably going to be added on. Um, you, you've taken the trouble to add this documentation on to the supporting documents. Why can't the agenda be modified and then the public notified about a modification to the agenda? Many, many, many of the other boards and commissions, whenever there's an, a, a modification made, um, there's all oftentimes a subsequent uh, agenda that's sent out. I mean, regarding regarding amendments, I, mean, I, I disagree. They happen all of the time. I know they've happened the last two months. I know they happened the past two months, um, especially from Harb, uh, because a lot of people's um, projects at their house were delayed because of the pandemic. So hard was a little bit, you know, slower to then, you know, review and respond to them. So we're trying to be courteous to our residents and help them, you know, since the projects are being reviewed by the HAR board, we are trying to add them on, you know, with respect to adding a potential amendment, I guess we could have done that this morning and added it to the, you know, it wouldn't have been there before because I don't think we would have necessarily known whether that was going to happen or not. But, you know, we could certainly add it once we know that that's going to happen. Well, that's all I'm asking. Uh, they're, they're often... I think the last one didn't have anything to do with a, a harb issue. It was just some other item that was added on at the last minute. And I know things come up from time to time, but if if, if you know that day, it, it would be helpful to know uh, that something else is potentially going to be discussed. Okay, well, we can certainly look into that. Are there any other comments? Okay. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness for the installation of a backup generator at 4 Catherine Lane? So moved. moved. Second. Rick? Thank you, Chair Nestor. Uh, this again was reviewed at HARB uh, yesterday morning. Uh, they're, they are proposing a generator that's similar to an air conditioning unit on the side of their property. You could see it here at 4 Catherine Lane and the HARB unanimously approved the generator installation. So th this is just new to me. We need to approve a generator in the historic district? Any, any change to these properties, even, even though this property is obviously, this structure is not historic, um, it is in the boundaries of the historic district uh, this property, uh, Black Walnut, which you know was a, another uh, more recent development, any change to the property requires it to go to HARB for 
recommendation for a certificate of appropriateness to the Board of Supervisors. Is there a, a slab or something that's going down to support the generator? I would assume that you have to put a slab down. You have to put a slab down for an air conditioning unit a size of this would require a slab. Um, and aside is this, the historic district is one of the items that's discussed in the comprehensive plan um, for this, this very type issue where you have more modern uh, homes that are being constructed there. And, you know, taking a look at, we'll just say taking a look at the historic district and what's appropriate on many different levels um, mm -hmm. is included in the comprehensive plan. Thank you, Rick. Do we have any other board comment? Is there any public comment? I can't see the chat. So seeing, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Rick, for sharing the screen. Sure, no problem. So now we're moving into the general public comment period and opening it up. Do we have public comments? And you are welcome to either write in the chat or just unmute yourself. Um, I'll be happy to go first. I, I have two items. Um, uh, the first item concerns uh, the issues that I raised at the last meeting on White Marsh Knolls, um, and that is the failure of um, the developer to properly protect uh, the trees uh, at this development. Um, at this past um, Shade Tree uh, Commission meeting, um, I believe uh, you all were presented uh, with a memo that came uh, from the township's arborist, uh, which I challenged because it was not accurate. Um, I presented uh, additional photographs um, showing uh, pictures from last Sunday, comparing them to January and prior discussions. This was brought up since this development uh, came to being when they first broke ground roughly in November. Um, the arborists claimed that uh, the uh, trees were being protected appropriately and um, the Shade Tree Commission in fact voted uh, by uh, a, a, a motion that that was not the case. And my pictures uh, are, are pretty clear. Uh, there, there are many circumstances where there is no uh, uh, shade tree protections uh, whatsoever. Um, and th this sort of brings me to the second piece, and I'd rather say this now, and I'm happy to engage in a discussion about this. If JC would like to chime in, she certainly was there for that. Um, I've raised this also before, and that is uh, that the minutes uh, of the township uh, do not reflect uh, the content and context of many uh, critical aspects that certainly I have said, and I know other people have said. Um, and, 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 and if they do have a comment about something, they're frequently uh, minimized. I'd like to say that they're whitewashed or sugar-coated. Um, there's uh, no real uh, uh, attempt to capture the concerns that, that I, as a, as a resident, have. And my, my question is simply this. Why, why are negative comments about something um, almost never allowed to be in the public record, in the public minutes? Um, I, I just don't understand that. Um, you, pe people, I point out things that I think that there's uh, uh, room to grow, to improve, and yet um, you, you don't allow, you don't respond. I told you, I told all of you on the Board of Supervisors about this project when it first happened. You, none of you replied to me, um, none of you, not once, that this was a problem. And it wasn't until I brought this to your attention at the last meeting 
that you decided to do something about it. Um, I, I'd like to know why that is. Do we have, you know, I, I hear what you're saying there. Um, I don't know, is there any other board comment? And, and, and herein, this is a problem. Um, there's, no one wants to make a comment. No one wants to say anything. Um, I, I'm, I'm ignored. Michael Drosner thinks that I'm trying to seize power. Um, I'm not trying to seize power. I just Eli, don't, Eli, don't speak for me and don't tell me what I think. Okay, you can. This is a public comment period. Feel free to share your public comments. So don't tell me how Michael, I feel or that I think you're Michael, seizing power. Michael, you emailed me that exact quote, um, and I'm happy to share that with everybody. That you said that I was trying to seize power. So please, for once, just stop being. I, I don't think I've emailed you in like two or three years. So if you're saying that that happened two or three years ago, you know. Maybe that's possible. Okay. Well, please stop trying to be a defense lawyer and respond to the issues that I'm bringing up. What? What? Now, what, what, what? Eli, well, you're, I'm you're gonna, bringing I'm up, you're bringing up that your feelings are hurt. I'm sorry that your feelings are hurt. You my know, feeling, like you, your, feel, your feelings are hurt. I'm sorry to hear that. I can't feeling, solve that for you. My feelings are not hurt. What I want is for the township to accept responsibility for the failures that took place at, at White Marsh Knowles. I want you to accept the fact that you have a um, arborist who basically lied in his memo. Um, and, you know, if, if you're unable, unwilling to accept these things, how can you grow? How can you be better? Okay, so I appreciate your comments. This is public comment time. I think we're making improvements. This is July. We've made considerable changes. And since this new board came on, we're continuing to make changes and listening. So certainly hearing and moving on. Are there other public comments? Um, can I just, I just want to, I just want to say something. Um, uh, I thought that the Shade Tree Commission meeting, I thought there were a lot of good points and good comments made. Uh, Laura has a good point in that this is a new board and we're working on a variety of different things. It is also, um, we are in the midst uh, of rewriting chapter 55 and chapter 105, uh, which uh, as Steve mentioned in the meeting will come about again in September. And uh, a lot of good points were made and things uh, to keep on the list uh, when rewriting those two. Um, I have- So you won't comment on the conflict between um, what the arborist had to say about what was being done at what you were there, you went with him and you saw the pictures. Um, the, the Shade Tree Commission made a motion and voted that the protections in chapter 55 currently are not being found, are not being followed. I was there, I did see the property and I was with him at that property, that is correct. Um, as I mentioned, we are working on a variety of things at the moment and we appreciate everyone's input. Other public comments? Yes, this is Sidel Zove. Um, I'd like to go back for a moment and comment uh, on one of the announcements made earlier with regard to reforms concerning the police department, the police policy. Um, and that has to do with um, the um, designation of Michael Drosner as the liaison to the police department from the Board of Supervisors. Could I just ask you to ex um, expand upon that description of that role? And in, in particular, I'm wondering whether Michael Drosner will be reporting to the public whether there will be any kind of regular communication reflecting his piece. So I'll, I'll interject on this, and even though this is public comment, I Could will just apply to that. That 
this, you know, I tasked Mike and the chief to do what you are asking in, in their first meeting is to evaluate what they're going to review, how often they're going to review, and how they're going to share that information. So this is, again, a fluid process, and they will be looking into all of that information. Thank you. I look forward to um, hearing what comes of that first meeting. As do I. Thank you. Other public comment? Rick and Sean, are there any chats that I've missed? I see none. Okay. All right, I'd like to announce that we did have an executive uh, session this evening discussing personnel litigation. and litigation. Thank you. Like to make a motion that we adjourn. <coughs> Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, White Marsh. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>